Howdy, friend. You been working in the mines again, too? I know my robot, but don't you think 98 hour shifts is a little too much? I think you mean not enough, partner. The mayor is asking for iron, clean water, and lots more, so without that, the town might as well just be dying. Yeah, I guess you got a point. I'm gonna head down to the local saloon for some oil and a game of nuts and bolts. Make sure to reboot before your next shift. And that's how I imagine most conversations go down between robots in the Old West. Howdy partners, I'm that indie games guy, and today we're going to be talking about the latest addition in the Steam World series, their newest title, Steam World Build, a city building sim game set in the same universe as the other games that have come from before. Ooh, editing version of me here. Before we continue with the review, I'll be calling this game Build from now on. It's a mouthful to keep saying Steam will this, Steam will that, so let's just take it back to the normal review me. Build is completely different to the other games that have been released beforehand. I'm sure you've all heard of one of these, Steam will dig, heist or quest, with the first game being Steam will dig, and this genuinely shocked me, but it was released in 2013. To think that that's 10 years ago now. I mean, I know robots don't age, but me, I'm feeling a little bit old now. Build at the heart is a city builder where you'll have to turn a patch of dust and dirt into, well, a patch of dust and dirt with buildings on top of it. The game runs very similar to other city builders that you may have played, where what you'll need to do is fill certain criteria to be able to progress to the next stage or milestone as it's named in this game. These milestones will normally be having so many settlers in your town, unlock a new settler, or just build so many different buildings within the town to be able to look towards progressing. This is how the game can allow you to take your time at certain milestones to really develop your town and try to make it into the best route into in boot in town this side of Robot Texas. Once you click that new game screen, you will first need to pick one of five starting locations, something that actually surprised me when I first booted the game up. I was expecting just one location, and to be honest, I would have been happy with that. But the fact that you do get to choose different settings depends on how you want your town to look overall. It's a nice little addition for the game, seeing as it's only just been released. I went with the good old fashioned orange desert beautifully named Giddy Up Gorge and named my town Botville as I genuinely always tried to think of something witty and fail so we're just going to stick with something right on the nose. Once you've watched the initial cutscene that sadly kind of gives the game away immediately as come on this robot right here mega sus it just makes you realize that all the time that the game will be going on you're going to be listening to this thing and it's kind of like we already know that you're going to try and take over everything and become the main bad guy and really be the one who's going to try and steal everything off us but okay i guess that's not going to be the case but hey sometimes you just gotta roll the punches and go okay this dude's okay so once we've listened to mega sus bot give away some plot of the story we now have our open plot of land this big empty desert right here with a just one little building placed in the middle will be the start of our town and this is where we can really start to play the game and understand what it is that we need to do. Really, this is when the fun starts. As I say, this big orange desert here will be the start of our town. The game basically starts by having us follow old Popper Bot's instructions. This explains how to get new settlers within the town, what each shop does, and what you'll need to build to make your robots happy round here in Robotville. As with all city builders, it's completely up to you how you wish to build the town around you. Everything does need to be within straight lines as, let's be honest, robots don't deal with corners very well, it would just confuse them. But you can make the town as big or as small as you'd like. You'll always need to expand in the future, but if you want smaller communities, then the game will allow you to do this as long as they're all connected by these dirt paths. Once you've started to build these little houses for your robot friends, you'll need to start building some amenities that will increase your robot's satisfaction. What at first I believe was going to be a very fun part of the game, quickly became very tedious, with the amount of new buildings that you unlock with each new milestone you go past. 
Whilst you can overcome this by making sure that your town is built correctly, with buildings being close to local shops and making sure that the robot satisfactions are always met by being on the same path, it just takes me out a little bit. It kind of makes me feel like I need to micromanage a little bit too much when I'd just like to make my town look as pretty as possible. One big plus though, is that you can move buildings. So don't feel like you need to keep things in one place. In a lot of other city builders, you need to demolish them. Whereas this, you can just pick it up, move it to wherever you want to go and start to see the robot satisfaction going up straight away. Now this might just be me, but when it comes to city builders, normally I really enjoy the first part of the game. But when it gets to the point where things are a little bit too chaotic, it becomes a little micromanagement game within the game itself. Build for me just got to that stage a little bit too fast, but I guess that's part of the charm. The building of town is meant to be fast, as you want the town to thrive, but I wish we had more criteria to hit before moving up within the milestones. Instead of just how many residents do we have or how many settlers will we move in, I think it would be pretty cool if it involved the decorations. The decorations felt like an afterthought. I love the idea of being able to create a world that's unique to each and every player. But I was expecting more variety with the offerings at hand, but when you look at the decorations that are actually available within the game, they're just little signs and bushes. Let's talk about the other main section of build, which is going to take us underground right now, so follow me and let's head downstairs. Welcome to the mines everyone, the hottest place in Robotville. The place where all the settlers want to work due to the amazing benefits. So how about we run through some of those benefits? You'll get to work underground, discover new areas, become a hero, possible death, fight monsters and discover cool new things. And really, I could go on and on and on and on as the benefits just are too good. Oh, but if I'm going to be, I, since I do have to stop, let's talk about what happens underground. The mines are unlocked around an hour or so into the game. It all depends on how fast you push the milestones. Once the mines have been shoveled out and ready for prospectors to show up, you get a cheeky tutorial on how to mine, dig out paths, and what's the whole deal with mining. I class the mine section as a mini dungeon crawler. It's not enough to be a full crawler as it doesn't feel like there's enough down there, but I still had a fun old time with it. Honestly, it was a nice throwback to the first game in the series, Steam World Dig. Sadly, you can't take control of any of the little robots, but that would have been a fun little addition if it did just kind of give you one that you could take control of and go dig out some dirt, find some gems. I just think that would just be a lovely little easter egg that they could give for people. The mines are used to gather materials for the town above, and you'll start by just being able to clear paths and get smaller materials, but as you level up the milestone, damn they love that milestone, you'll unlock newer robots that can come down and join the mines and start to get some of the harder materials that them little pickaxes can't claim. Down here is also how you progress the main story. I won't want to give too much away, but you're basically looking for parts to build a certain machine and maybe look towards the stars. So here's the bit everyone's been waiting for, and it's a bit of a kicker. While the game is a fun ride, and whilst I'll say it definitely did make me feel like I was having to micromanage my whole town at times, it's still an enjoyable experience. One that I think if you're a fan of SteamWorld genre, this will be something that you'll love to play. The biggest L for me is the game's length. Yes, sadly it is a story based game when playing through the campaign, and even though it is a city builder, it does have an end. As I said before, I won't go into details about what it is that you're looking to do within the game, as it's always best to experience this for yourself. But if you're looking at play length, it's only around 8 to 10 hours, depending on how much you do around your town. I was so hyped for this game, and I feel this has been the biggest letdown of all, as the price tag currently is £25 on Steam. That's a large amount to pay for a game that you could finish in a weekend. Heck. You could do it on a Saturday if you got up early enough. Fingers crossed they update to extend or DLC does come out that allows different stories depending on the different areas but only time will tell. Which 
I thought the different areas would be different stories, but sadly it's just the same story with a different skin. Me personally, I'd say this is a game that's probably better to wait on at the moment. Very fun game, but maybe wait for a sale. If the price was around 1, 1, 1, 1, or £15 if you're human, then I can see it doing better, and the reviews might be a little higher. Yikes, they're not looking great at the moment. And that is my review on Steam World Build, a fun ride, but sadly a short one. Let me know in the comments down below if you've played the game, or if you're thinking of picking it up. I'm sure I'll see you all around the saloon soon. Peace out everyone. And so that there ends our tale on Giddy Up Gorge. It was just so beautiful, I genuinely think I'm about to cry. Oh, here we go again. Everything is so beautiful to you. Do me a favour and go get cleaned up at the bar wash. You're getting me all covered in oil now. Oh jeez, I'm gonna have to deal with this all day. I just wish I could take a day off and go down to the saloon and have a chill. I gotta go back over there and do all these things.